My info today was to ride to the city of Tafraut to see some of the ancient ruins there, but I got held up by all the amazing scenery and so I had to turn back before sunset. It's brilliant here, but that's the thing. I mean, there's only so much that you can see in a short amount of time. And, you know, sometimes you just can't see it all. And you have to pick your choices. And uh, I think I'm choosing the landscape and see maybe tomorrow if I can get some of the ruins near Agadir. Otherwise, it's a dilemma. There's only so much you can see in a short amount of time. <laughs> what a shame. I don't have to go all the way to a tough road. Problem is, geographically, at what point do you decide to turn back in a place like this? It's really just the time factor that counts. A little bit more, but then really I have to go back. And now what people do in Arab countries, I've seen this also in the Emirates and in Oman, is on the roadside, stones are put on top of one another. Now the meaning of this is something that I'm not quite sure of, but it's something I can ask maybe today. And some of them are even painted in white. Now that is something really that I've not seen before. It's got to be something cultural, possibly religious. These stones are set around a tree. Surely there must be another reason than having these as road markings and whatever. It's baffling. I mean, what's that all about? Nobody's going to go r driving around the tree in the middle of the night. Maybe that's a Moroccan pastime, I don't know. Right, approaching 4 o'clock, it's time to head back. No ruins today. Time eventually runs out on this eventful day, and so, with a heavy heart, I decide to turn back to Agadir. I can't say that this was the best mountain trip I ever did, as my ride to the Picos Mountains in Spain and the Sierra Nevada, and also to Turkey and Austria, were equally delightful. But what makes this place so very special is a sense of Morocco's long history that comes with riding through the area. The anti atlas were formed around 300 million years ago as a result of the collision of continents that then drifted apart again to form today's formations. Some scientists say that the atlas were once part of a mountain ridge much higher than the Himalayas, then sank again due to the continental movement, only then to be raised again when Europe and Africa started colliding below the sea level, and then to lose height again due to erosion. The atlas, a mountain ridge in constant yo-yo motion. I've just come across this building here. Let's check it out what it's all about. I've just arrived at this wonderful house here. Ruin. I did make it to some ruins after all, brilliant. Anyway, uh, contain the excitement. There's a signboard here saying something, oh, and uh, forest, something to do with water and uh, river, uh, water and, ah, uh, oh, Rabat, uh, forest. Yeah, yeah, it says Al Maya Wal Rabat, and it says Himaya Al Ghans, Al Ghans Mamnua. I'm not quite sure what Ghans means, so I'm checking here up on the dictionary, and guess what? The word isn't there. So I hope I'm not doing anything wrong. I'll check it in my bigger dictionary when I get back home. Anyway, in French it also says Reserve de Chassé, reserved for something. And chasse in Tredit means something is forbidden. <laughs> Why not write it in English as well? You know, you've got so many English tourists here too. Anyway, let's check this thing out and hope I don't break the law. Uh, but it does show that uh, there's a Ministry of uh, Forest and Forest and Water, which shows that environmental protection is quite important in Morocco as well. So things will stay the way they are for a long time. So I think I'll contain my curiosity, make sure everything stays legal. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, I missed the plate safe. Anyway, um, let's uh, see what we've got here. Must have been probably a toll station. This room seems to have been quite small, but like I say, these, many of these houses aren't very big. That reminds me of England, actually. And what do we have here? Stick the camera 
top and see. There we go. Let's just peep inside. Oh wow. That's amazing. I wonder how long it took to build something like this. There's no shortage of stones around here. And as we can see here in the ceiling of the doorway, somebody really seems to have made an effort here. Right, let's head back. I later on checked my big dictionary back in the UK and discovered that the word guns actually means hunting and confirms my assumptions that environmental protection, animal welfare and species preservation are of growing importance in Morocco. And then there are stretches of road just lined with these stone towers. And I just asked these two couples why they put those stones in front of one another in a very unique uh, conversation where I actually asked the, the man something and uh, the woman, then his wife, translated it from Arabic to what I assume was Berber um, for, for the guy. He about marking the, the road at distances. But I think they thought I was referring to these mileage stones. Never mind. Now, huh? So what do we have here? Seems like this barrier or something crashed into it and these stones are actually erected here to demark that uh, the road comes to a curve. So maybe it is partially true, but then why encircle a tree? It's maybe to protect the tree from a car crashing into it or something. And then it was all around the tree as well. So would, tree, would cars come rushing in from the desert? This is a real mystery and I'm starting to get really excited. Let's just see what came crashing down here. Well, I don't think they'd leave it here anyway, if it even went down there. No, nothing there. But we get to see this. And of course things become even more interesting now that I've seen this white line here. Something's up for sale. There you have it. The secret is lifted. Some development project for an entrance to the village of uh, Eight Baha. So with massive construction projects on the way, everyone wants to protect their land and declares it with these border stone towers. And then, on the way home, one of my good deeds a day. Well, the good news is the Agadir to Casablanca project has actually saved a life. I just saw this turtle crossing the road and uh, it would have been run over by a lorry, but I saved it. Living in a dangerous place, man. Just watch yourself. And to get up there, huh? Let me pick you up and get you where you want to go. There you go. Off into the woods where your home is. And of course another breathtaking shot. And as you can see with this wadi, there's sometimes rivers that flow through the countryside. But it's all dried up at the moment. And I've been told that near Agadir there's this waterfall. But at the moment it's got no water. So I don't know if it's worth checking out. Heading back to Agadir, I catch the last few glimpses of the anti-atlas scenery. my motorcycle on Arabian soil gives me some ideas for the future. Maybe I'll again hire a motorcycle somewhere in the Arab country and maybe in the Gulf, maybe in the Emirates and do a ride maybe from, I don't know, maybe from, Dubai, from Abu Dhabi up to Ras Al Khaimah. And so slowly plans for the future develop and also internal discussions of long distance overlanding versus stress-free local motorcycle hire.
Mark and Agadir I enjoy some of the cautious driving and decide to ride up the mountain overlooking the sea to get a good view. And the day ends with a nice dinner and dessert.